from Dallas to Los Angeles and a screen near you. Here is B Wildcat 2. What is happening, everybody? This is B Wildcat 2 here, back today with some more TCU uh, coaching carousel with uh, the offensive coordinator, Big Troll. This is a uh, recruiting update for week four as TCU looks to take on Arkansas, the Razorbacks, an old rival from the Southwest Conference. But today, you're going to see some recruiting. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that um, I have all the way up till week seven of this that is not record or that has been recorded, but it's not live. So, but starting in week eight. All my recruiting videos for NCAA will be with live commentary so that you don't have to hear me ramble on about nothing in particular until the uh, end of it. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I don't know when you guys will be seeing this. You'll probably see it soon enough, but uh, I'm going to have it. try to have it scheduled for... Uh, probably not Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which is, uh, this coming Monday, I believe. Uh, but maybe around that time, probably maybe either the Tuesday after that or the Wednesday. Uh, but anyway, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm probably, well, I am, officially, uh, once you see this, uh, I'm an 18-year-old, and, uh, you probably don't care, but anyway, um, I don't know what uh, what all I'll be getting for my birthday as I'm recording this. Probably, I think this is about a week or a week ahead. Yeah, about a week ahead of of the date, and uh, I don't know what I'll be getting for my birthday. But keep your fingers crossed that maybe this is the last video that is like. I mean, you guys think that these are pretty good videos at least even though I, all I have is this headset with a microphone on it um, but I might be upgrading to a snow blue snowball or Yeti here soon so keep your fingers crossed on that um, it's probably it has been a while since the last time we had a recruiting update uh, now we're gonna look at Matt Meyer the quarterback from Minnesota Minneapolis uh, looking to get him to come to TCU. He's number one. We're number one on his board, and we're knocking down Nebraska. As you see, we are ahead of Nebraska by about 300 uh, interest, and um, now we're knocking them down even more. Uh, you'll see it. We're talking to Matt Meyer, and uh, this is the first guy we're talking to in this uh, video. We've already scouted a few other players found out that Matt Meyer is a 70 overall a plus 10 uh, three-star caliber quarterback and uh, he may not be our starter next year but he'll def hopefully he'll be on the team if uh, we can get him finding out his uh, interests in a couple of other categories and uh, at the very end of it we gain 271 interest, and Nebraska loses about, let's see, that's 94 interest, I believe, if I did the math right. So I think next up, next person we're going to talk to is Dom Carr. Uh, and if you're wondering, I think I was asked to uh, make some of these guys in a live stream to make uh, some of these recruits. And uh, that's the reason why... Uh, you may not have heard of him. I, I did not as fan on my own, but uh, Dom Carr, I believe, is uh, one of the guys that comes out into my live streams. I know that we did it uh, for my other di offline dynasty uh, that I don't feature on YouTube, uh, the Florida State Bobby Bowden coaching carousel. We had uh, we had um, uh, B.J. Wild, who, went, who signed with Georgia at the end of it when things were uh, all settled up and cleared. Uh, we had uh, Dom Carr, I believe, who also went. No, it was it wasn't Dom Carr. He's the one in the TCU, which you're seeing right now. We're recruiting him. Uh, we had Chris the dog. He got he went to Alabama at the very end of it. Unfortunately, we couldn't sign him, but we did get Epic Eagle. <laughs> 
Well, so if you got, you guys need to like come out to my live streams, and uh, I do upload videos when I live stream. Uh, I don't know about when I'll be doing making recruits again, but definitely the next time I probably uh, have the chance to make some recruits in the uh, Bobby Bowden Coaching Carousel. I'll live stream it, and, and if you guys want to uh, be a recruit for the uh, Florida State Seminoles and their seat in there, which would be next season, season three of the coaching carousels. We're already in season two. Then uh, you just come out to live stream, and uh, and I'll probably do a few of you guys, depending upon how many people are there. And uh, Yeah, we'll have a good old time. I always like live streaming, uh, interacting with the viewers, and uh, it's a fun time. I uh, usually get probably about maybe uh, anywhere up to about 10, 15, 20 people. I think the most I've had at one point was either 30 or 35. I I don't have that many people at my live stream, which means that it means I can see more comments and uh, I can respond to more things. So it, it, I kind of like the way that because I'm I'm not a small channel, but I'm not a big channel like that can't see anybody's comments so people have to repeat comment over and over and over because they can't see uh, the person that uh, is live streaming can't see their comment so I like my live streams a little bit more than I like other live streams and I live stream on twitch TV which I think is much better at least with the comments uh, during this live stream than anywhere else even YouTube even though it becomes a video right after you're uh, done streaming uh, Twitch's comment system is what puts me why I live stream on Twitch instead of which I, d I don't have the ability to live stream on YouTube yet but if I could I probably still would stick with Twitch anyway we're talking to a strong safety from La Porta, Texas we're first on his board and uh, I believe this is the fourth guy we called we gained 521 interest from him and A&M loses a uh, few. Yeah, that was the fourth guy we've called. You'll see it here. We're up on A&M by almost 800. He's a soft commit to TCU, so next week we'll have to see if he committed or not. Now we're going to talk to uh, a defensive end uh, named Washington. I can't see his first name, but uh, we're first on his board, and we're uh, starting off with a huge spark with the conference prestige. You'll see it right there. We're up 700 interest on Oklahoma State, even though Oklahoma State is in the is in uh, his home state. Uh, we're talking about some coach prestige and uh, playing time. We'll probably we sway his importance, but it doesn't work. Now with television exposure, it's high to him, and we have a B. They have a C plus, so we gain 62. They lose 20. Uh, one more, and then we do the prospect's choice. We find importance and proximity to home. It's low, so that means maybe he'll come to tech TCU instead of Oklahoma State. So you see at the end, we gain 355, and Oklahoma State loses 20. As um, There's no more scouting time available, but we still have uh, five more recruits to call this week. As you see, saw his, uh, his, his interest board there. Now we're going to talk to... Jonathan Williams, the tight end from Cleburne, Texas. We are going to choose uh, to talk to him about Coach Prestige. We're going to make a pitch, and we're going to gain 122 interest. Talking about Conference Prestige, Oklahoma State is in our conference, so we'll just give him the pitch. And uh, you'll see the interest now. Oklahoma State is uh, behind by only 200, but TCU is still first on the board, so we're going to try to knock Oklahoma State down. Uh, it seems like a lot of recruits that we have Oklahoma State's also on their board so we're trying to get them away from a, our rival in the Big 12 one of our rivals in the Big 12 uh, and get them to come to TCU so after it all is said and done Jonathan Williams gains 547 interest we gain 547 interest from him and Oklahoma State ends up losing 56 interest Next up, I believe we're going to talk to Brian Jones, the quarterback from Zapata, Texas. We're first on his board. Uh, Nebraska is second, 
and wow, Nebraska lost a bunch of, Nebraska didn't lose as much interest as we gained from uh, Mr. Brian Jones, but we're uh, knocking him down big time here, and we're uh, going to talk to him about uh, his, about proximity to home, we're going to try to sway his important interest in uh, proximity to home, which does not work. We'll make a pitch to him about television exposure, and we're also going to talk to him about championship contender, I believe. But you see, Nebraska behind 260 interests, so we got to keep them off our off our heels. And you see, Oklahoma State third on Brian Jones's board, and uh, the interest, uh, the prospects' choice, gets us 455 interests gained from him, and they oh, Nebraska loses about. 95 interest, I'd say. I can't, couldn't really tell. So a couple more recruits to call. We're going to talk to Ray Jones, the fullback from, uh, it looks like, uh, I can't tell where he's from, actually. But we're ahead big time by 380. We're all, he's a soft recruit to us. If we could just knock Nebraska out of the race, then we'll get this guy. Missouri's third on his board. And Nebraska is losing a bunch of, bunch of, it's taken some blows from uh, TCU uh, recruiting staff uh, proximity to home right there championship contender right there getting lo loss of 29 and a gain of 65 and academic prestige we're going to find his importance which is the least so now the prospects choice gives us program tradition plus 32 and at the end of it, we gained 311 from Mr. Ray Jones. Nebraska loses about, oh, plus 100, I'd say. Or maybe just a bit under 100. But now Nebraska behind by 380. Soft recruit to TCU is Ray Jones now. Last two people to call include Joe Edwards, a pocket, pocket passer from Pearland, Texas, who's 900 interest ahead of A&M at this point in TCU and uh, we're gonna compare or we're gonna give them the proximity to home the coach prestige big time swing right there 80 90 60 to 90 to 60 TCU conference prestige uh, we will make a pitch for the conference prestige he's a 73 overall minus 2 we found his least importance. Wow. No, nothing gained from his least important thing. And uh, he's a four-star quarterback. And we gained 41. And uh, A&M loses 13. So the prospect's choice is about program tradition. He's most interested in that. And at the end of it, we gained 439. A&M loses 73 more. West Virginia third on the board. But it looks like Joe Edwards will be coming to TCU We'll have to come back next week and see about that. But we're going to talk to one more recruit this week, and that will be uh, Jarrett Davis, I believe, a center from Galveston. We're second on his board behind LSU, only behind by a little bit, though, 360, I believe. So we're trying to stay in there with LSU and uh, knock them down some. We'll make it a pitch for Coach Prestige. We'll uh, compare schools on playing style, and I believe we'll also comp we'll find his importance in conference prestige, which is very high. Playing time, we'll find his in pro uh, his interest in that, and that was low. Proximity to home is going to be compared to schools, and TCU gains 42, LSU loses 14. The prospect's choice is about program tradition. He's most interested in that. At the end of it, we gain 336 interest. LSU only loses about 41 interest. So I hope you guys enjoyed week four recruiting update. Come back next week when we'll take on the we'll see who committed and who didn't. Week five recruiting, but also look for week four as we take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Game three of our season as we're slowly moving on towards the postseason in this TCU Connect coaching carousel. Thanks for watching, you guys. Peace.